Maybe you didn't know, but I'm a magician. And this is my magic wand. This is Come along with me as we unravel the mysteries of color pooling and navigate our way through the Argyle Stitch. Grab your yarn and hooks and let's get started. If you are ready, let's get going on this wild ride that begins a little bit bumpy, but then turns into smooth sailing. I'm gonna take you through step by step exactly what I did to figure out how to do color pooling with this Karen Jumbo in the colorway gossamer. Now, first things first, put hooks to the side. We need to study our yarn. I can see that this yarn has distinct color changes and I want to learn about the color changes blue there. Down. So this blue here is a cutoff piece. So I don't know how long that piece is. So I'm just going to ignore it. So here's the white. Then it goes to blue. Then it goes to orange and purple. Orange again. Blue. Back to white. Blue. Back to the orange and purple. So it seems like the colorway goes to be a orange, purple, orange, blue, white, blue. Now I'm gonna grab the recommended hook size to begin with, which is an H, and I'm just going to chain. Now um, this color change here, I'm going to just kind of leave this hanging. I'm gonna just start wherever I feel like it, uh, because it doesn't matter where you start, because what we're looking for is um, to be able to clearly see the color changes colorway and uh, the pattern that it sets up so um, I'm going to crochet all the way through this until I get back to that color anyway so um, here we are in the orange going on to the purple now I'm starting with the recommended size for the yarn but that does not mean that I am going to use that size hook for this project. It all depends on my gauge and it depends on the number of stitches that I can get with that particular hook size. So let's see where we are. We're at, we have white, blue. Okay, so here's the orange, purple, orange, blue, white, and then blue is next. And then it goes back to the orange. So that is the extent of the color pattern on this yarn. I need to make a chain that goes all the way through this color sequence. So I have, I'm going to just ignore this part because it's a partial sequence. So we're going to ignore it. We want the entire sequence. So we have orange, purple, orange, blue, white, blue, and then it's back to orange and I have an orange hoop, orange loop on my hook. Now here's where you need to be patient. Here's where the ride gets a little bumpy. What I need to do now is I need to moss stitch across this chain using this hook and determine how many stitches I can make in each color. Now, that being said, I may have trouble making full stitches in each color with this size hook. So that might mean that I need to move up a hook or down a hook. Let me show you what I mean. Now with the moss stitch, we're gonna start with the fourth chain from hook. One, two, three, four. Not counting the one on the hook. One, two, three, four. I'm going to single crochet and then chain one. Skip a space, single crochet, chain one. So I was able to get two full stitches and I have a purple hook loop on my hook. So I know that purple will be my next color. Skip one. I'm going to single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. So with purple, with this size hook, I have three so far, single crochet, chain one. There's back to the orange. Now, I didn't show you this, I apologize for that, but I studied my yarn. I showed this a little bit in part one where we have to determine are the lengths of color the same size. So taking a look, these lengths of orange are the same length. So I will need to make the same amount of stitches each time I see orange. So looking back, since I made two orange stitches, I'm back at orange. I need to make two orange stitches again. Skip one, single crochet. 
skip one, single crochet, chain one, back at blue now. Now let's see how many we can make in blue. One, two, mm, kind of a third one, almost white in there. Let me back that up and see if I can make it fully one or two. Let's compare the blue to the orange to see if they're the same length. Because I know I need two stitches in orange. Yes, orange and blue are the same length. So I should be able to get two stitches in the blue. So there's one. I'm gonna loosen it just a little. Two, and I have a blue loop on my hook. It should be white, because I've made two stitches and white is next. So I don't like this hook. I think I need to use a little bit of a bigger hook. Now in my experimenting, after using several hooks, over and over, back and forth, doing this moss stitch, taking it back, doing it again, I've discovered that with this colorway and my gauge, I need to use a K hook. So I'm gonna skip ahead to the K. Now you need to pause this video and you need to experiment with hooks all the way until you can find a hook that gives you a consistent number of stitches for your colors. So let me show you what I mean by a consistent number all the way through. So let me see. One, two, three, okay, here we go. Third, fourth chain from hook. I'm gonna make two oranges. There's a purple loop. Now I'm going to make three purple. Now, um, in my experimenting with this yarn, oh, come on. Now in my experimenting with this yarn, I know I need three purples. Now, it's barely there. The orange is barely showing up. So I need to make these just a little bit bigger so that when I get to that orange, it is fully orange with that hoop, that loop on my hook. There. Now I'm going to need two oranges again. Worked out great, got a blue on my hook, it's next. Doing two blues. There we go. One. Two. Now you may have noticed that I'm pulling these stitches a little bit looser because it's not quite getting to the white like I wanted to if I do it a little bit tighter. Now it may not be that way the entire way through the project, but for now, in order to get my beginning part correct, I need to make sure I have two blues. Okay, now. In examining my yarn, I've noticed that the white is a little bit longer than the purple. So I had three stitches in purple, but in white, I'm going to have four stitches. Back to the blue, I'm going to have two. Now, at this time, I need to stop and take a look at my work and see where I am in the colorway. I can see my beginning chain. I have the colorway of the orange, purple, orange, blue, white, blue. I turned around at exactly the next color. Orange, purple, orange, blue, white, blue. And I'll do another sequence of orange, purple, orange here. With this colorway, that is the key. Having a consistent number of stitches, that's your magic number per color. And when you begin, make a chain all the way through your color sequence. In this case, I had a little bit left over and that's fine here. I had an orange, purple, orange, blue, white, blue. And when I turned around, it started the colorway again. Orange, purple, orange, blue, white, blue. And I need to do a third section of the colors. So orange, purple, orange here, and then I'll show you what's next. So continuing on, I'm gonna make sure I have that orange on my hook. 
there's a little smidge of blue, it'll be okay. We wanna to try to avoid that because we want our stitches to be exactly the color that they're supposed to be if we can. Sometimes we can't get it exact and if we do that too often, it makes our work a little bit muddy where it doesn't really stand out with the sharp lines in the squares that we want. So this one's there, has a little bit of blue in it. It's okay for now, but I'm gonna watch out for that to make sure I don't keep doing that. Okay, let's see next, we have three purple. One, two, three. Now it doesn't really matter that it's landing on the purple in the chain. The chain is just to help us get started in the color sequence and seeing what that looks like. So here's three purple. Oh no, I don't have an orange on my hook. Orange is the next color I need. I have a little bit of yarn that I need to use up. Now, there's two ways that I can correct this. I can go back and I can loosen a couple of these stitches, even all the way back in the orange, loosen them so they use up a little bit more yarn. there now I have an orange or if that didn't work I could sneak in a half double so I need to use up some of that purple yarn so I can sneak in a half double if I need to again I don't want to do that too often so we'll make my stitches have a big gap in there and we'll talk about that in a minute but uh, be sure that if you need to eat up some of that yarn so that you have the correct color next Next, we have two oranges. One and two. Okay, so let's discuss what we've done so far. We made a chain all the way through our colors. Orange, purple, orange, blue, white, blue. Then we turned around directly on the next color. And then we made three sections of the colorway. Orange, purple, orange, blue, white, blue, orange, purple, orange. I'm back at this next color, this blue, and I need to turn around to go back again. This is where we're going to go on faith that it's going to land correctly. We're gonna turn around and stitch down, that's our second row, and on that third row, when we get to this end and turn again, we'll know if things are going correctly. Fingers crossed, they are. Now, with blue, I need two stitches, but I also need to do two chains on the side. I'm actually gonna do them pretty tight because I wanna make sure I have enough blue to make my two stitches. But I've gotta have these two here. So when I turn around, you'll see my single crochet here, and there's a space that I've created for my with my chain one, that space there. That's where my first single crochet is gonna go when I turn around and I want it to be blue. That's the next color in the color sequence. There's the first one. The next open space, two. So I have two blue stitches, just what I want, and white on my hook next. Now looking back, I had one, two, three, four white stitches the first time. So I need four white stitches again, one, two, oh, excuse me, two, ah, you see this big opening, this big hole, that's where we had our double, or excuse me, our half that we put in there, so what we need to do to close that, and if you need to do that anywhere else in your work, this works the same way, we're going to go a little bit below, we're going to go into the chain below, we're going to grab that, so if I were farther along in my work, I would just go to the, to the row below and grab a hold of that to close that gap, see there? That way I don't have that big space. So one, two, okay, three. Now I'm running out of white, so I've got to be careful. I might need to tighten up these last couple to make sure that I get four. Okay, there we go, I have four, four white. Next is blue again, two blues. One, two. Now I'm going to continue down and I'll meet you at the end. Continue in your magic numbers of two blue, four white, two blue, two orange, three purple, and two orange. I'll meet you at the end. 
All right, I'm at the end and I have one more stitch to go. This stitch on the end can be a little tricky. So you'll see here where my white is. Let me show you here. Excuse me, where my orange is. This is a single crochet. Now it's a little bit wonky because of the being pulled around, going around this corner, but this chain two right here and this single crochet right in between there is where we are going to put our very last stitch. This is important because getting that last stitch in there not only helps us keep our color sequence in the correct order, but it also helps us build a nice straight side. So be sure that you're paying attention to this last single crochet. Look for that space to put your hook in. Okay, now we're on blue. We need to do two blues. So I'm gonna do one here. And I'm going to do this one kind of tight because again, I've got to do chain two and turn that corner. I've got to have enough yarn to make another blue single crochet. So I've done one, I'm going to chain two a little tight. See, I'm running out of blue. I've got to be careful. I'm going to turn around. Now, second row between these two singles, I'm going to put my last blue, not pulling it tight so that it'll only be blue. I don't want any of that orange in there. Now underneath, it doesn't matter if it's orange, just making sure that these V's, the legs of our single crochet and the top here are blue. Now, here's where we get to see the magic happen. We're on our third row. So I've got to take a look at the first row and I'm gonna be looking for a diagonal. Okay, let me get out my blanket here to show you what that means on something that is farther along. Taking a look here, let's analyze this, okay? Taking a look, let's start right here. I have a blue here and it's going diagonally. I see a blue, then a purple, and then a blue. I want these blues to match up. If I go down again, I have a blue, then an orange, and then another blue. I want these blues to be diagonal from each other. Next stitch, is a white stitch. So I want the second row up to also be a white stitch. And it is. Going along, the next one is white, 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 and on down. As I continue, I want to make sure that my oranges, when they're diagonal, line up. Here's an orange with a white in the middle of another orange there. Diagonally, orange, blue, orange purple, blue, purple, purple, orange, purple. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Every other row to be diagonal from the other. Let's take a look. All right, I'm on orange. My magic number for orange is two. So let's do two. Now I've got to go back and make that tighter. I'm not gonna have enough room to make that orange. So let's make this a little tighter. Some of my orange yarn got used up making that last blue one because of my turn. So I've got to do this a little tighter so I have enough orange for my two orange stitches. Okay, that's better. All right, let's take a look. Did we hit the diagonal? Seems like we did. If you take a look here, I have an orange, white, orange. Orange, white, orange. My very next stitch is purple. So I need the diagonal from that to be purple purple, white, and right there, it's going to be a purple. Purple is next on my hook, so I'm on my way. One, two, three purples. Let's do two oranges. One, Two. Let's check our diagonal. As I go along, I'm going to need to be paying attention to are my colors still lining up correctly? There is a purple, white, purple. Purples are diagonal. Purples are diagonal here. Purple, blue, purple. Orange, blue, orange. Orange, orange, orange. So this next one is blue. So the diagonal from that in this very next stitch here should be a blue. Blue is next to my hook. I'm doing great. I'm gonna go ahead and keep stitching and I'll meet you at the end. All right, I'm at the end of my row. I just completed three purples. So I have orange on my hook ready to go next and I need to do two 
orange stitches. I'm at the end again. Now remind, be reminded, we have this single crochet here and this chain two that we're going to go right in between. That is where we want our stitch. Okay. We also are gonna need to allot for the chain two to turn. So I'm going to do these pretty tightly. There's my single one, two, I have that much yarn to be able to make my next orange. I need another one. So when I turn my work between this purple and this orange, I'm gonna make my second orange single crochet and chain one. I have blue on my hook ready to go. So blue is next. One, two. Let's take a look. Is our diagonal correct? Sometimes as we're going along, we can get excited and forget to check our stitches as we're going. So it is vital that you stop every now and then and check that your diagonals are still correct. So let's see. I have a blue here. Diagonally from that is another blue. A blue here and diagonally from that is another one. White should be next. White is on my hook. So my diagonals are lining up spectacularly. Now I am going to continue this and so are you. And we're gonna make an Argyle blanket. Next, I'm gonna show you how to join in a new skein once you have used up the one that you're on. All right, when it's time to join on a new skein, we've got to once again study our yarn. We've got to take a look at where we are in the color sequence. If we just join willy-nilly anywhere, we're going to mess up the way the colors fall and we won't get the beautiful pattern that we're making. So taking a look here, I had orange, purple, orange, and the next colors are blue, white, blue. So I've got to take a look at my new skein. Here's a blue, white, blue, orange, purple, orange, blue, white, blue. So I'm joining, I'm gonna be joining on the blue, but I have to make sure I join on the correct blue. I have two of them. So let's take a look. I have this blue that goes from orange to blue, which is what I'm doing here, orange to blue next. So that's what I need. This other blue, goes from blue then to orange. So I know I'm not gonna use that one because the working yarn I'm using does not go blue orange, it goes blue white. So I need to join in this piece of blue. I'm gonna do my best to get it as close to where this orange is as possible. It's really easy to do. So here I am, I have finished my two oranges. I should have a blue hoop here. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to join on, just lay it over my hook, and join on with a blue loop. I'm gonna tighten up a little bit where I was working. Tighten, 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 just a tad. And now I'm going to make two blue stitches with my new blue yarn. Now it might be a little bit wonky as you're going along and just tighten that up if you can. If not, it will correct itself as you go and it'll get covered up. So don't be too concerned about that. After you get going, this will, will we're joining in on our new skein um, and then we can go back and uh, sew in our ends here. That's one way. Another way you could do it is to trim and do a magic knot. Um, some people don't like knots in their work. I don't usually mind them. Um, so I'll do that if I'm feeling like it. Otherwise, I'll just join this way and then weave in my ends. So after I've joined on, I can continue and keep going on my pattern. Color pulling can be tricky and it's not for the faint of heart, but if you enjoy a challenge and seeing beautiful patterns come out of yarns that don't look like they would make that, this is for you. Stay tuned for part three in this color pulling series to learn how to make this. Thanks for watching and remember, it's time for yarn. Thank you.